Hello, this is Archetypal Hour. My name is Adam. I'm here with Lexi and Psychonaut. And we've just been talking about ancestor work. And in that context, um, Psychonaut was sharing a little bit more about the Ohm Tree Grove. And he was just about to explain more because I, I had very, almost no familiarity with this. I'm like looking at this amazing image, which we'll share um, within, uh, somehow, <laughs> if you're listening to this, you'll you'll find this image. Um, and yeah, I'm just really like excited about it. So he's going to talk a little bit about it. And uh, yeah, share as much as you want to. It's like, I know you only have um, maybe about 10 minutes or so. I think that's beautiful. Um, and yeah, just whatever you feels like coming up in terms of like the context of this and what the Almond Tree Grove has meant to you and your ancestor work too, if you, if you have the time. Thank you. So, I mean... <clears throat> We're kind of talking about this as as it all relates to ancestor worship, and I think, I think even just to backpedal like a little bit, because I think that this delineation between like worship and work is worth covering, um, and specifically in the context of um, trying to develop personal relationships um, with the ancestors. And that's so much of what defines my work. Whereas I think the term worship almost implies like a sort of distance or a sort of mm. quote unquote orthodoxy, uh, you know, of techniques and ways that this should be gone about. Whereas I, I, I think that this should be far more personalized and the goal shouldn't be just veneration because we 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 definitely should find place for that um you know as i was saying earlier a lot of the people that i cover in my work um as far as ancestor worship goes people like Varathis or Boudicca or Vercingetorix um put their life on the line and suffered greatly because of it to preserve what we do have of these practices. So I think that there's definitely a place for veneration um, and worship, but I, I think that what more defines my practice is an attempt to create that personalized relationship and dialogue yeah. that goes both ways, not just one way. Um, yeah. Whereas to me, worship feels like more of a one mm -hmm. way um, yeah. exchange. Um, and that and it it definitely doesn't have to mean that for everyone. That's just my you know personal interpretation. Um, I've used the term worship to mean that in the past, but I think when that hits people's ears, the majority of people are going to kind of envision this one way exchange of energy, um, which I I. I I think is to miss out a little bit, you know, <laughs> I, I think that we can um, gain much more from yeah. a sort I mean, of personalized yeah. relationship. Um, all... Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, for me, like, no, go ahead. Worship, please. I don't know if, it, if I would have felt it wasn't two way, but it definitely doesn't feel like relational, like, yeah like i don't know what the person on the other end is receiving more than just like devotion which i think so i, I but which i think is a thing like it's a two-way thing but yeah i think what you're saying is more like there's a deeper relational sharing among both sides um beyond just sort of like devotional energy like i almost mm -hmm. like yeah like relational like like sharing information even potentially i don't know if that you how you feel about that term but Right. And e even even maybe calling yeah. upon it for help in like divinatory work um, or um, add a general advice. And um, yeah. hey, it's 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 definitely interesting. Um, but uh, all the all of which to say is it kind of brings us into um the space where we ask well how can we do these things you know rather than just 
acting, you know, purely in terms of, you know, veneration or worship? How can we develop those more personalized relationships? Um, to which I would say that this is a very personal, you know, sort of practice and one needs to find out what works for them. However, to answer your question of what's my way of doing it is with every single one of these ancestor worship articles that I've written in the past, I've always assigned um, symbols, alternative names, which could be used, and then um, ohm correlations as well. And those ohm correlations um, are further correlated to plants and trees, and we can utilize that to, I think, create um, material sort of touchstones by which we can engage with those engage with the ohm, you know, directly and materially and sort of cultivate that space by which we aren't commanding, um, you know, whatever, whatever we're trying to work with, whether it be the ohm or the ancestor, um, we are in, instead creating a space which is conducive for those exchanges mm. to occur, right? And... Tell me more about like the ohm and what that has meant to you. Yeah. And these correspondences that really like I'm I'm curious um what has you know if you want to talk about it, because this might be a too much of a long conversation, but like I guess kind of I'm curious about your early way into it, like that kind of like what drew you in and how you were how you were brought to it in terms of people finding their way. Yeah. So so my introduction mm. to the ohm was through divination and um just some sort of background on the ohm is that it's viewed as a um sort of proto or primitive irish language um and myth and it makes multiple appearances in mythology um but it's in the mythology, it's handed down um, by the god Agma, um, who is a part of the two of the Danan. And um, <laughs> from there, it gets a little messy. Yep. <laughs> as, as, as do yep. things in, in this lineage often. Um, we, we start to see... Um, Oof, man, I can't, I can't even really, this might have been a, I don't, I don't even want to say that it was too modern of an invention, um, but it's, it's, it's use in the, in uh, magic and in divination and further these plant correlate uh, correlations has been controversial in the past mm -hmm. however i've always found this practice to be generative so coming from divination um which is usually used with ohm staves and one can draw them from a bag um and lay them out um the most common uh spread that I have seen uh, used in ohm divination is a uh, past, present, future um, in a way that's mm. similarly used with uh, tarot cards. And um, from there, I discovered these plant correlations, which has led me to more of a space or I was just kind of talking about with like the ancestors is more of attempting to develop a relationship with the ohm, uh, independent of you know practices of divination and stuff like that. And I I have found that to be far more generative than relegating it to a specific context. 
and I would say that I I would say the same about runes as well. Mm-hmm. Um, engaging directly with them, unmediated by any specific practice such as divination, and then from there, once I felt like I had a solid grounding and all of that, I moved on to um, formulating kind of this alchemical practice around both the om mm. and to a lesser degree runes as well thank you for sharing that and i love what you said about or at least what i was really struck by like the unmediated piece like just sort of really engaging with it and i think it's beautiful because like even me like right now i'm not gonna lie i'm literally yeah. writing out these ruins runes on my um on my piece of paper in front of me because like they're just so striking it, there's like a desire to just make these little scratch marks like there's a real elegance in them and for those that aren't seeing the image right now or don't have it in front of them like i don't know if you if you're if you're good at explaining psycho not like the image like of these these particular patterns um let me know because like i would love to have to just hear your take on it but i feel like it's just a striking image like the way that it goes down from the from the five down to to the one or i'm not even sure how they are numbered but like these 20 character uh characters are so fascinating Yep. And even um, the fact that it's a vertically oriented language rather than horizontally oriented is. Sorry. I'm just getting excited. Like, this is my first time being exposed to these psychonauts. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. No, and and I've I've done the same thing. You know, there's, there's power behind it. Right when you start scribing them, you could feel it sort of move through you, um, mm. and there, th- there's a lot. To yeah, but do here. you want to take a stab at describing like the slashes, like these twenty? Because there's like clearly a progression here, but it it really does feel like it forms this circle. But I find it so striking, that at least how the image laid out here, where you have pine at the leftmost. If we were to read it like left right, which again probably doesn't make sense with this, and then the the hawthorn at the end where With pine, you have a long line and then a short horizontal in the middle line cross, you know, crossing it. And then with Hawthorne, you have the long line and then just half the piece uh, coming on the other side. So it almost feels like one is feels like it's sort of for me when I look at the image and it might have no sense with with it. But like with pine, this image of like if there's movement for me. Whereas with Hawthorne, it feels like there's a little bit of like a closed circuit or like there's movement ending for something there. But maybe that's just the way the image looks to me. I find it really interesting. So please tell me what, what actually, um, yeah, tell me more if you want to. Well, and well, and um, I, I mean, I hope I hope it's not lost on anyone that that's oh, how I stylize oh, my yeah. name in here as well um, is derived from the own. Yep. And it creates a lot of uh confusion <laughs> and um anger amongst <laughs> people who try to remember my name on social media. Um but there's there's a whole family mm-hmm. too here of um characters that you're not seeing um because they are less mm. frequently um included in there. Wow. Uh, I, 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 I hesitate to say this because I, I, I'm not sure how, like I said, how new this is, but this could, this is probably um, deriving from these more modern interpretations, like mm-hmm. um, okay. the assignment of like the, the plant correlations and stuff like that. Probably related, probably related to the work of Robert Graves, if I had to guess. Um, whereas, um, and, and it does show up in mythology. There, there is this sense of the Om being far beyond just a language. Um, certainly, with its or, uh, origin in um, uh, from Agma, um, but. Even beyond that, um, the Ohm does show up a couple more times, um, specifically in the context of having 
you know, mm-hmm. magical power. Um, but I it, honestly, for any, for anyone listening, you know, outside of just uh, the description that you've given mm-hmm. of these, I'm 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 a little hesitant to even mm-hmm. give a description because I think you just need to see <laughs> them, you know, lay your eyes on them, right? Um, because mm-hmm. because there there is power in it, right? In the same way that there's power within the ruins, and I would, I would again encourage people to attempt to, um, to sort of invoke it, you know, um, let it let it pass through you, see how it feels, and you know, um, again, there's nothing wrong with divination. I love divination. Been doing it for the last, you know, decade and a half, right? <laughs> Um, it's definitely one of my specialties, um, something I'm very good at. However, um, I think that even in the context of divination, you can deepen, you can uh, refine your craft and deepen um, all of this with with those personalized connections, mm. um, unmediated, you know, flow. Right? Uh, I and love experience. that. And I, I just like that. For me, I love the intimacy that I'm hearing from you. Um, yeah. And it can lead to interesting places, um, like this. This whole, um, you know, we 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 step out of mediation, right? And that's led me to all of this, uh, these practices with alchemy, right? Um, which is a step back into mediation, um, but through a completely different lens, completely separated from. Uh, the practice of divination and we can see you know the om ruins etc in a completely different light um that mm. to my knowledge has never been and that's really exciting before. wow and i really appreciate this invitation for people to just like look at the image and see what it does in writing these out because it, it they are that you're right and like I'm also trying to figure out where I'm being drawn to, like, because I feel like after this, even I'm going to be definitely looking this, looking at this a little bit more and playing with these images. But like for me, I'm really blown by the fact that two, that both of my dogs' names are are uh, here in this plant um, correlation piece, <laughs> Hazel and Willow, and they're mirror images of one another too, which is like also <laughs> kind of blowing my mind right now. I'm like, that's fascinating. Yeah, and my my, my intent, I, I didn't follow through on this, my intent to um, connect to this um, new practice mm-hmm. with Graves was to say that there are different interpretations of this. Um, so one should um, extend themselves beyond just one image that they find on a Google search um, and find multiple sources for this um, and experiment with the means by which they can um you know have those experiences not necessarily limit themselves to a singular Mm -hmm. interpretation thank you and like i almost sorry go ahead and that is one of one of the you know uh, benefits of engaging in ancient practices Mm -hmm. that so many people have been doing them for so long right (laughs) that uh, we have such a backlog of experiential knowledge to say, you know, this is what works, and this this didn't, you know, work for the majority of people, right? Whereas these more modern things, um, they require us to build up that experiential sort of backlog um, so that we can more accurately identify um, what has worked for the majority of people and what, what hasn't. Um, I definitely don't use newer practices in a pejorative sense at all. I very much so um, encourage Mm -hmm. um, experimentation. Oh, thank you. Is there like a general place or a place even on your own website where you talk about each of these in a way that feels like a decent-ish primer? Or do you think it's better for people to really just like expand out? No, I um, <laughs> I've been thinking about um creating, you know, um my own sort of or putting to, putting to pen my own uh, interpretation 
of all of this. Um, it's just an extremely daunting uh, <laughs> um, project because th there are so many. Um, one book that I found particularly um, useful in this was, uh, mm. it, it's entitled Celtic Tree Magic. Yeah. I mean, so is it safe to say that, like, all of these characters, like, for the most part, they really feel like they could be part of a tree? Because it does feel like, I mean, I'm seeing some that maybe it's a little harder, like the ones you posted below. But you could see plant life that in some of those directions and shapes, though, for sure. Mm. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, I, I I would I would caution one against um putting too much form to it, um and having those experiences primarily right um and again you know we're we're talking about you know the the medi the mediation and the symbolism so I would try to sort of um, mm, I like go that. in I like right this. as blind as possible <laughs> yeah yeah. And with without without as many you know preconceptions, um, and um, you know do that or or you you know it just depends on what kind of you know practitioner you are. I have found um, because these interpretations are so they exist within so many multiplicities yeah. now. Oh, thank you for sharing about this. So, I believe, yeah. So, uh, Learn Religion actually has an article on the OM, which Learn Religions is an excellent site. It's an excellent resource for a lot. Yeah, thank you. And we can share that link that too point. for those listening asynchronously. Yeah, thank you. Hmm. Well, I feel like I'm definitely going to be exploring this a bit. Uh, and I really appreciate you bringing it in, especially in this context of like ancestral work and how this has been a part of your practice. And I'm I'm being mindful of time because I know you don't have too much time, but I didn't know, I wanted to invite you to either share any last thoughts on um, that piece, like with the ancestral work and anything that more you want to say about that. Um, and anything else you want to say before closing out? I would say that OM is a criminally underrated form of divination um, in modern practice. And I would highly encourage people to engage with it. And in terms of ancestral veneration, worship, work, whatever framing that you have for that, I would um, recommend a more personalized, less rigid, if your practice is in fact very rigid um, and that gets in the way of these personal connections. Um, because for a lot of people, it is very almost orthodox. You know, the means by which these are, these practices are ascribed. And there's nothing wrong with that if you can cultivate personal relationship in that context. But I think for a lot of people, it becomes um, an impediment rather than something that's generative. So I guess I would just call your attention to that and think about that. If that rigidity is, you know, generative or if it's getting in the way, but cultivate those two right Cultivate those two-way relationships, you know. Um, yeah, I... Mm -hmm. <laughs> relax, you know. <laughs> um, I... It always, to me, it always just sort of feels, and I don't want to project too much on all of this, but it feels like to me, personally that when i die and if somebody were to do ancestral work 
with me, <laughs> I wouldn't just want to be talked at. <laughs> I wouldn't want somebody to just set up an altar and talk at me. Um, I would want to engage in relationship with people okay. um, rather than just a one-way street. So... Think about think about how you would receive that. You know, you the viewer, right? Um, how would you receive that, and what would be a form of ancestral work that you would appreciate more, yeah. rather than people just speaking at you, not with mm -hmm. you? No, that's beautiful. Thank you, thank you, Psychonaut. And I'm definitely feeling, you know, that nice urge to like the way I'm. Way it's coming to me, which again just speaks more to how I'm interpreting it as one of the listeners you're speaking to is more like, um, is yeah, like for me, it's more like do more listening, brah. <laughs> I'm chatty, Kathy, from even in my meditative and contemplative practices, so, <laughs> you know, and that that is that is one of the interesting things, right? Is that you know, often times we can trick ourselves into thinking even even in the terms of worship or veneration, right? That we are the only one in the room and we just talk and we talk and we talk and it's like, so are you really worshiping or you just like the sound of your own voice, right? <laughs> you know, if you don't open those channels for mutual exchange are you really interested in whatever the the focus of your veneration is or are you more just interested in pumping yourself up with this practice right no doubt something to think about yeah well i appreciate it thank you for everyone listening um and yeah, we'll send, we'll share, make sure these links are shared. And uh, second, not, let me know if there's any other good links that you think of afterwards that we can share for those listening asynchronously. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely.